It's the Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Baltimore. The fallout from Britain's vote to leave the European Union, the so-called Brexit referendum, is continuing. In the economic realm, the drop in the stock markets around the world wiped out $2.1 trillion in value from stock markets. The British pound dropped to its lowest value in 31 years, and British businesses have warned that they will implement hiring freezes and also implement investment cuts due to the economic uncertainty that the vote has provoked. In the political arena, Germany, France, and Italy have said they will not support any EU treaty negotiations until Article 50 of the EU treaty has been invoked. That is the article that specifies the procedure by which a member country may leave the EU. In other words, they are forcing Britain to commit to leaving the EU and sign on it uh, by an affirmative action uh, before negotiations begin. With us to discuss the recent development is Heine Flasback. Heine is the director of Flasback Economics, a consultancy for global macroeconomic questions and the editor of um, Macroscope an internet magazine. He's also co-author of a new book titled Against the Troika, Crisis and Austerity in the Eurozone, which he wrote, wrote with Kostas Lapavitsas. Very good to have you with us, Heiner. Thank you for having me. So, uh, Heiner, let's begin with uh, the current situation in the UK. There is a political crisis and leadership crisis uh, underway. Let's begin uh, by describing what that is, and then we'll get into the economic crisis. Well, you see, the point to, to make first is that, uh, so to say, the movement that uh, uh, carried the leave, uh, the leave vote uh, was not a government. It was a, a broad movement of different types of uh, parties. On the one hand, UK, uh, the UK Independent Party on the one but there were also uh, other organizations. There were members from the uh, Tories, members of Labour. So it was uh, a huge and heterodox uh, movement that drove uh, the Leave campaign. And in so far, it's absolutely clear that uh, they don't know how to react because there is no government uh, that could execute now uh, the will of the British people, of the majority of the British people. And so they're guessing around how to get a government that could really do that because all the parties are split and uh, the, the heads of the parties are also split. There is uh, only one uh, well, very prominent leader, Boris Johnson, the former mayor of London, who was, uh, so to say, the spiritual leader of the Leave campaign, but uh, he's not yet prime minister and whether he get a, gets a majority, uh, that's a very open question. Heiner, the bigger question at hand right now is there's a lot of speculation uh, that uh, the UK will not implement this measure. They will actually just take forever to negotiate and renegotiate and find ways to remain in the European Union. Uh, do you think that they will uh, go forward with this or hold back? Yeah, that's an uh, absolute possibility that they will hold it back, uh, the decision, hold the decision back, uh, because, well, this is not the first re referendum that would be ignored in the end uh, or would be repeated and then with another outcome uh, be uh, accepted. So, uh, and it looks very much like that. I said at the beginning already, we have uh, a very heterodox uh, and heterogeneous uh, group of uh, supporters uh, for the leave uh, decision and uh, they will not be able to unite to uh, form a coherent a coherent process uh, of negotiations with the European Union that will be incredible fighting inside uh, of this group and inside any new government on the left on the right wherever it is uh, so it is absolutely possible uh, I think it's uh, maybe at the moment even the most realistic option that uh, the negotiations will go so for years and years, and then uh, in the end, uh, some people will say, uh, come on, it doesn't work, let's try again in a referendum. Because, you see, one of the biggest conflicts is this UKIP party, for example, that is the only party that uh, homogeneously fought against uh, Europe and for the leave, 
uh, they are they are very naive they're saying uh, well we are free traders you know we want to have free trade with the european union but we want to cut uh, the migration of people but this is uh, a no way uh, a no go uh, for europe uh, definitely because europe europe european union has shown in negotiation with switzerland and other countries that this is exactly exactly not acceptable so if the the uh, united kingdom or england wants uh, uh, free trade they have to accept migration at least from inside uh, the european union uh, and so far it's an absolute naive position that was behind uh, the leave uh, campaign uh, and was a dominant position in the leave campaign uh, that will never come true and so far everything is possible in terms of uh, what is now appearing to be a, a crisis in terms of the European Union itself, uh, Angela Merkel, and you're in Germany there, uh, just the night before the elections tweeted uh, that we must not forget uh, that uh, the European Union was formed as a peacekeeping uh, venture to keep peace uh, and unity in, in Europe. Uh, but it is quite the contrary in terms of what has become of the EU in terms of its economic and trade uh, ambitions. Um, give us a sense of how Germany is reacting to uh, what happened in the UK. Well, Germany is, uh, again, uh, as I call it usually, uh, in a state of denial. Uh, Germany is clearly responsible for much of the trouble in the Eurozone, so in the uh, European uh, Monetary Union. Uh, but nevertheless, these Eurozone troubles have clearly spilled over into Great Britain and have given the, the image and the, uh, the idea to the British people, to many British people, that this Europe doesn't function at all if at the core uh, in, in the core countries, uh, uh, they form a currency union. A currency union is a disaster, and it's Germany dominated, and uh, everybody has to obey Germany. Take the example of Greece, the terrible example of Greece. Uh, against the will of the Greek people, Germany uh, pushed through uh, so-called reforms, what they call structural reforms, which is neoliberalism. So, uh, but the uh, German public and the German politics are in full denial of that. Uh, they talk about everything and nothing, but no one, no one uh, mentioned uh, Germany's role in that. And uh, in so far, only in Italy and in France, some uh, media were, were honest and bold enough to say, well, uh, this is a big mess. Uh, this mess was uh, caused not only by Germany, but in part by Germany. And uh, on the other hand, uh, we have uh, not shown that Europe is a functioning a union, that it is a political union, that it's an economic union, uh, because we have this uh, mercantilist Germany in the middle of the of Europe with a huge current account uh, surplus, the others in current account deficit, and all the political tensions and the power tensions that are falling from that. Now, um, you had uh, penned a book with Kostas Lapovitsas that we have also interviewed on this very issue. And he mentioned uh, in his interview, uh, when you look at the people that voted to leave the EU, um, it was really a, a matter of class. Those who are impoverished, who have been looking for jobs, who are very frustrated with the healthcare system, people who are frustrated with uh, not being able to find housing, uh, finally got an opportunity to exercise their will, and this is how they did it. Um, so when you uh, take all of that into consideration and add to that long, elongated austerity measures in the UK now, um, have all added up to this sum total of uh, people's desire, which is to uh, leave the European Union. What political consequences do you think this is going to have on Britain and then the European Union? Well, for Britain, uh, the situation is extremely difficult. As I said, there is not a single party that would uh, stand behind uh, the decision. Uh, there is a uh, big danger of a split inside the United Kingdom because Scotland is opting out or wants to opt out in a new uh, overall poll uh, and uh, be remain a member of, uh, of the European uh, Union. And so far, there is a big mess coming up in Great Britain and nobody can forecast what really is going, is going to happen in the next month. I'm rather sure that they will delay the decision. They will not... Uh, 
uh, write the letter uh, in, in which they ask for procedure following Article 50 that you mentioned in your introduction. So uh, what they're going to do, they're going to delay uh, this decision for another two, three, four months until they have a functioning government and they have a government that really is willing uh, to execute uh, this process. This then even the process will take another three, four, five years. Nobody knows. It's extremely complicated to get uh, one country out of uh, such a huge uh, legal uh, and political framework as the EU is. Uh, on the other hand, what we, what we have, and so far Costa is absolutely right, we have a disaster situation in, in particular in continental Europe, but also in the UK for uh, the poorer part of uh, the population. That's absolutely clear because uh, in particular, again, continental Europe uh, and the European Monetary Union was in the last five years totally unable to escape a recovery. Uh, you cannot imagine uh, what the discussions were in the United States. Well, but if you uh, if you were in such a situation, but if you compare the United States and you com uh, with Europe, the development uh, of uh, GDP and growth, uh, unemployment in the last five years, then the United States was a paradise, so to say. But even the United States, things are not going so well. So Europe was a plain disaster, and this disaster is due to the fact that uh, Europe is implementing the wrong policies, and these policies are. Uh, in their character, neoliberal, and so far, of course, is absolutely right. Uh, and they are uh, austerity-minded, uh, 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 which is which is just foolish, in my view, to say it very clearly. It's just foolish in a situation where a country like Italy and France uh, are in recession for five years. They're in recession for five years. The unemployment rate is more than uh, above 10 percent. And nevertheless, they're asked by the European Commission uh, to cut their government expenditures to try to reduce the deficit further, which is against all logic, against all reason. All right. Heine, let's continue this discussion. Uh, there's the political crisis, and then there's the economic crisis, and then there's the uh, crisis in terms of the European Union that all is posed by this decision uh, for the UK to leave. Uh, yeah, let's take this up in our next segment. Thanks for joining us for now. Thanks for having me.